ago, there lived in Venice a man called Antonio. He was a merchant, owning many ships which traded with distant countries. Despite all this, he was a good and humble man. The sun is shining very brightly today. I hope this day gives me happiness and success. early in the morning. Hello, Antonio. Oh, what a pleasant surprise, Pesanio. Come in. What makes you come so early in the morning, Pesanio? I need your help, Antonio. What's the matter, brother? Actually, I'm in love with the rich girl named Portia, but I'm not likely to go and ask her if she can marry me, as she is a rich and a very beautiful lady. Please why don't you try, brother, and see whether she really loves you or not. Antonio, I'm out of money. Can you lend me some money? It happened that at this time, all his ships were at sea and he had no money to lend Bassanio. All my ships are currently at sea, brother, my friend. But go to a money lender and borrow money from him and tell him that my ships come in and give him all the money that he had lent me. Now there lived in Venice an old Jew named Shylock. The Jews in those days were the money lenders of Venice. What makes you come here, young man? I would be pleased if you lend me some money. So, what will you get in return? I will lend you as much as you want when my ship is returned. Shylock was one of the greediest Jews in Venice. Antonio hated him for his wicked ways and often insulted him and spoke rudely with him. Shylock hated Antonio too and was anxious to revenge his insults. Will Antonio pay for you, Antonio? Yes, sir. I won't you anything extra for your loan, Bethany. Thank you, sir. You need to pay the loan in three And just for a joke, Antonio must sign a bond saying that if the money is not paid in three months, I may cut off a pound of death from his body. But, sir. Don't be afraid, Miss Antonio. I'm indeed cutting into signs of the bond. My ships will return a month before the money is due, and I'll have three times as much as Shylock has lent you. Bassanio had no faith in Shylock and did not like Antonio to make such a terrible promise. But Antonio thought that Shylock was really joking. I don't like this promise. No fear, Bassanio. My ships will return one month before the day. Bassanio unwillingly took the money and left for the harbour. At the harbour, they met Gritanio, another friend of Bassanio. Can I come with you to Belmont? Why? I have my own reasons. You don't worry about me. You worry about yourself. Why should I? What will you say, Portia, when you reach there? Uh -huh. I think we should leave. We are getting late. Bye, brother. Take care. So Bassanio said goodbye to Antonio and left to Belmont with Graciano. Portia lived in a big house in Belmont with her servant companion Nerissa. Her father had died recently and left her a great deal of money. He had been a wise old man and to protect his daughter from greedy men who might try to marry her because she was so rich, he left Portia three boxes. One of the boxes contained her picture and whoever chose the box would be Portia's husband. Oh Nerissa, I'm so scared. Would someone be able to choose the right box? You don't be scared, Portia. Your father would have definitely thought something. Just before Bassanio arrived from Venice, a king's son came from Africa. The prince of Morocco was powerful and wealthy. 
as he wished to marry her. But Portia did not love him and hoped that he chose the wrong box. Isn't that hard, Narissa? I cannot choose the man I wish to marry or refuse those I dislike. You have plenty of admirers to choose from. But you remember a young man from Venice who visited your father once? Yes, yes, it was Bassanio. I think that was his name. True, madam, and I think he deserves your love more than any of the others. I remember him very well, and I also remember he was worthy of your praise. But I can't marry him unless he comes and chooses the right box. Perhaps he will. Your father is a wise and virtuous man. I am sure he would have arranged the boxes so that the right person will choose the right box. Narissa's sensible remark made Portia feel more cheerful as she showed the room in which the three boxes were kept to the dark-skinned African from Morocco. He went in and examined the three boxes. Oh, I think there's something written on these boxes. I think I'll read the gold one first. Whoever chooses me shall gain what many men desire. After reading the gold one, he moved to the silver box and read, Whoever chooses me shall get as much as he deserves. He moved on to the plain lead box and read, Whoever chooses me must give and risk all that he has. Whoever chooses me shall get as much as he deserves. Whoever chooses me must give and risk all that he has. Hmm, what many men desire. Hmm, that must be fair Portia. Her picture will certainly be in a box of gold. Hmm. He opened it, but all he found inside was an ugly skull and a piece of paper containing these words. All that shines is not gold. Goodbye. So, the Prince Morocco sadly said goodbye to Portia and returned to Africa. The next visitor was the Prince of Aragon and he was too shown the three boxes. The Prince was a young man with a very high opinion of himself and he chose the silver box. If I get as much as I deserve, I should certainly give the fair Portia. But the box contained nothing but a fool's head and these words. Many fools are hidden behind a silver covering. So be gone, sir. The prince, feeling very silly, went away, as the prince of Morocco had done. Then Bassanio and Graciana arrived. Bassanio asked the permission from Portia as he wasn't too wealthy. Madam Portia, may I choose one of the boxes? No, Bassanio. I don't want you to be insulted in front of everyone. No. Let me try, madam. No, Bassanio. I'm too scared. Don't be scared, ma'am. I'll surely win. Okay, but be careful, Bessanio. Hmm, yes. I wish Bessanio chooses the right box. Don't worry, madam. I think he has a bright luck today. Bessanio examined all the boxes carefully. He looked at the box of silver and gold and shook his head. Things which are beautiful from outside are often ugliest within. So, I think I will choose the plain box. Portia was filled with joy as Bassanio opened the box and found inside a lovely picture of her. They arranged to be married at once. Bassanio's friend Gitanio asked for permission to marry Nerissa at the same time. Back at Venice, Shylock's beautiful daughter Jessica wanted to marry Lorenzo, one of Bassanio's friends. But her father wouldn't allow her to marry Lorenzo. Firstly, because he was not a Jew and secondly, he was a friend of Antonio. So one night, she planned to run away with Lorenzo. I must take a large amount of money and jewels with me. Suddenly, she heard Shylock speaking to his friend about Antonio's bond. I would prefer the pound of flesh on his body rather than 20 times the money. Jessica and Lorenzo had come to Belmont to escape Shylock's anger. They bought a letter of Antonio for Bassanio with them. 
Bassanio read the letter and he turned pale. What happened, Bassanio? Oh, Portia, this letter brings the biggest threat to me in my life. All of Antonia's six ships have been wrecked in the sea and all his money is lost. That is not all. Shylock hates Antonio even more ever since his friend Lorenzo ran away with Shylock's daughter, Jessica. He's so angry that he walked about the streets crying, My daughter, my money, my jewels, justice, justice. Find me my daughter and my money. And after he got to know about Antonio's ships being wrecked, he is anxious to take revenge. Shylock went to the Duke of Venice and told him of Antonio's bargain and of the bond he had signed. The Duke of Venice and many other merchants tried to persuade Shylock to give up his cruel revenge. Shylock, be merciful. Give Antonio some more time. No, I won't. We will pay on behalf of Antonio. No, Antonio must only pay the money. Why do you look at the person who is paying? See the money. Antonio cannot pay me the money. He must therefore keep his promise and pay me the pound of flesh. Jessica said about her father that she heard him speaking to his friends that he would prefer a pound of flesh from Antonio's body than the money. Bassanio was terribly disturbed by the news. And Let us be married now and then you must go to Venice at once. You shall have gold twenty times over and when it is paid, bring your true friend here. You're right. So Bassanio and Portia were married and after the ceremony, Bassanio and Gratanio left at once for Venice. They found that the trial had just begun. Antonio, would you like to ask for mercy? No, I would not ask for mercy. As Shylock distrates me too much. And if a man breaks his promise, the people will think the merchant of Venice are not honest. Shylock, what mercy will you show? Why should I be merciful? I do not have Antonio. Do all men kill things that they don't love? Don't all men want to kill things which they do not love? I'll give you twice the money as much as Antonio owed you if you let him go free. If you offer me 6,000 times the amount he owes me, I could still ask for a pound of flesh. How can you offer mercy if you show none? I do not want mercy. I want justice. I could still ask my knife for a pound of flesh. But at that moment, a messenger came to the duke with news that a clever young lawyer had arrived from another town to judge the case. Almost at once, the lawyer entered accompanied by his clerk. They both looked very young, but they brought with them a written introduction from a lawyer friend at the duke who assured him that the young man was well qualified to judge the case. His wisdom was soon shown by the careful questions he put to the Jew. Shylock and Antonio had to say, he begged the Jew to be merciful. Why should I be merciful? Tell me that. Mercy is twice blessed. He blesses him who gives and him who receives. Great kings are always merciful and give himself and are known as to be full of gentleness and mercy. Therefore, Jew, although you ask for justice and I ask you for mercifulness. Shylock would not listen. He could think of nothing but revenge and he refused to take the money Bassanio offered, although Bassanio said he would give him ten times the sum he owed. Come on, Shylock, be merciful. Take three times the money and I will tear up the promise. Shylock still refused and the lawyer had to admit that the claim was right according to the law of Venice and if the Jew were to be merciful, Antonio must give him a pound of flesh. Hey, wise man, time to judge me. Oh, why did you mind? How I mind you? You must prepare yourself for the night, Antonio. Who oh, noble judge, who oh, wonderful young man. Come, open up your chest. Yes, yes, the coat, near to the heart, noble judge. Are there balances to weigh the flesh? I have them ready. Have you called the doctor to fill his wounds in case if he bleeds to death? No, that's not written in the bond. Then the lawyer turned to Antonio. Do you have anything to say, Antonio? 
don't feel bad, Basanyo. In fact, I'm happy to die for your sake. The pound of Martian's flesh is yours. The court agrees to it and the law admits it. Most learned dead. Come on, you never know, yourself a knife. Wait a little, there's something else. This letter does not promise you even a drop of blood. Take your pound of flesh, but if you spill even one drop of blood, then you must give all your money and all your possession to the state. Now, it was Britannia's turn to praise the judge. Oh, learned judge, isn't Sherlock to the learned judge? You ask for justice, you shall have it. Then give me the money, but then you give it three times for an act on your own screen. I did it, you would. Not so fast. You have already refused the money. Now you should have only justice, nothing else. I do not want mercy. I want justice. I will still ask my knife. Finally, shaking with anger, the old Jew asked for the money he had lent Bessanio. And no more. But the judge refused him. And we have not finished yet. You, Shylock, are a Jew. According to the laws of Venice, anyone who himself is not a citizen of Venice, he must be put to death and all his money and property must be shared equally among the state and the person who has tried to kill. You, Shylock, are not a citizen of Venice and you have tried to kill Antonio. Now, the Duke must decide on your punishment. I show you more mercy than you show to Antonio. I give you life, but your money must go to the state and Antonio. Shylock was a defeated man. What could he, a money lender, do if all his money was taken from him? Take my life and will. You take my life and make. If you take the means by which I live. What mercy can you offer him, Antonio? Antonio was a kind-hearted man. Keep my share of property, but on one condition. When he dies, he should give all his possessions to his daughter Jessica and her husband. Are you contented, Shylock? I am contented, but now I have the permission to live. I am feeling ill. Tell me, tell me the papers at home. I will sign it. Antonio and Bassanio were full of gratitude to the clever young lawyer and asked him to accept the money that Shylock had lent Bassanio. But the lawyer would take it. Yes, sir. Take some gift to remind you of your gratitude. If you insist, I'll take the ring you wore on your finger. Bassanio hastily drew back his hand because the ring was one that Portia had given him and he had promised her that he would keep it always. He told the lawyer that the ring was of small value, but the lawyer seemed to be annoyed. You taught me how to beg, and now I think you teach me how a beggar should be answered. Goodbye. Then he had gone. However, Antonio persuaded Bassanio to let the lawyer have the ring. And Bassanio, regretting his earlier request, sent Gratanio to find the young lawyer and give the ring to him. Gratanio found himself in trouble too, because the lawyer's clerk, had asked him to give his ring to her, a gift from Nerissa. Bassanio and Gratanio returned to Belmont, taking Antonio with them. They were full of happiness at the thought of seeing Portia and Nerissa again. But they were a little worried. What would their wives say to them when they seen that the rings had gone? When Portia looked at Bassanio's hand, she asked him at once what had happened to the ring. He explained, but she seemed to be annoyed. He begged her to forgive him. And Antonio told her that Bassanio was not to blame. He had given the ring to the clever lawyer who had saved his life. I dare swear he will never break a promise again to you. In Bassanio's astonishment, she gave the very same ring that had been given to the young lawyer. And Erisa gave the same ring to Gratanio as well. You are not amazed, but there is a letter. Read it and then you will get to know that I was the young lawyer and Nerissa was my clerk. Antonio, there is a good news for you. Three of your ships have arrived safely in harbour and all your money is safe. That's amazing. 